Hello, I'm Nigel de Kerser, I'm one of the ADs of the London Deanery. My role is lead on assessment. Um, before I start, I'd like to say well done. Well done for getting into um, especially general practice training in London. It's highly competitive and other people will be saying well done as well, including friends and family and other educators, but you've done extremely well to get here. You're an extremely bright group of people. Um, you have um, succeeded in primary school and secondary school. You've got through five years of medical school and foundation. And with 1,200 applicants for three or 400 places in London for general practice specialty training, um, you can be confident that you have skills and abilities which are not only good, but very good. Um, there are people who'd give their right hand to be with you today in your position or working alongside you. You are in a very privileged position, highly respected across society and well done for getting there. What I want to do over the next 15-20 minutes or so is talk about what you need to achieve over the next three years, what you need to do to get there, um, who's involved in your training, um, the assessments you need to undertake, I want to spend a tiny bit of time on assessment theory and also about the last steps you need to do. All you need in the three uh, programme is this, which is CCT, and CCT stands for um, Certificate of Completion of Training. CCT is also an acronym, three letters standing for a phrase which has a meaning of its own and the health service and health education is replete with acronyms including the iconic NHS, National Health Service and there will be lots and lots of acronyms which we'll deal with over and come across over the next few minutes which um, probably won't mean very much now but come back to this tape over the next few months and uh, hopefully begin to make more sense and, and um, begin to rationalise what it's all about. Why bother with assessment? Well this is the opinion of a mid 19th century American humorist and this is the opinion of a, um, or the statement of a mid 20th century British politician. This is Nye Bevan, he actually founded the NHS, he actually invented it, and a part of his selling of the NHS to the British public, to the British government, to get it funded and get it established, he was very keen to put across that um, the health service should be universally good. Not that you had to travel to Utoxa for a urologist or Sirencester for a cardiologist, but everyone you meet, everyone you should. Um, encounter for your health needs would be of a high standard, a good standard, a very good standard, and a standard which you'd be confident with. As a practicing GP, I want um, to be confident that I'm competent in the role I perform, um, that myself and my colleagues practice the highest integrity, and that the British public um, and my colleague professionals in, in other disciplines of medicine have a high regard for general practice as professional and full of integrity. Um, if we move on to assessment theory now, this uh, is a chap um, with lots of little people around him being tied down by ropes and um, I've got to explain why we're involving him. This as you all know is Gulliver and Gulliver um, is a political satire, the, 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 the novel, the narrative is actually very small. It's a political satire written by someone in the 17th century against the standards and norms of the society in which he worked. And I'm mentioning Gulliver because there's a scene in Gulliver's Travels where he attends the selection process for um, ministers of state in the land of Lilliput and what the candidates have to do is to cross a high wire. Um, a high stakes event like an examination, either everything's wrapped up in a few minutes of, of being assessed, a high stakes event in that um, things can come undone and years and years of practice and preparation can all fall apart. Um, a high stakes event, some people say it's not worth it, it's not worth the risk, the risk of damage and, and um, death is too much. And people would be perfectly able to do the job, um, don't undertake it. So this is where a lot of the theory of uh, general practice and medical education comes from at the moment. That the assessments we undertake have got to be reliable, it's got to be the same process for everybody else. It's so crossing a high wire, it's the same process for everybody else, but it's got to be valid, got to be valid to the work that the general practitioner and the GP is expected to perform to his patients valid in the workplace, valid to assess that the GP who's seeing you, treating you, managing your health care um, has been assessed as being competent to practice as a GP, not that he's been assessed on a task which displays his ability to learn a lot of facts and knowledge but has no meaning to the application of um, health knowledge to the illness and symptoms of the patient. We have a guru of general practice and his name is Miller. Um, and he's got a pyramid, he uses the um, terminologies validity and reliability and as one improves, as validity improves, reliability goes. So reliability is mostly knowledge tests and don't make any mistake, for medicine you need a lot of knowledge. You need a huge amount of knowledge. But the people who come into medicine and medical specialty training are often very good at assimilating knowledge and being aware of their knowledge, being able to um, record and recollect knowledge. So you do need the knowledge exams. The knowledge exams are an integral part 
of um, general practice and general practice training, but it's the valid exams, the valid assessments of how you perform which are more important. And if we move on to the next slide, we've got uh, the three types of assessment, three types of exit assessment you'll have um, during the um, training program. AKT sits at the bottom, it's a knowledge test, they call it applied knowledge, because it's not just knowledge, it's how the application of knowledge, CSA clinical skills assessment, which is a um, mock um, morning clinic, and workplace based assessments at the top of the period, how do you perform in the workplace. So we're here now at the bottom left, and we've got three years to get to the top right. And as we get to the top right, uh, we go through three transition stages, ST1, ST2, and ST3. And during each of those stages, you need to perform and carry out and be assessed on a number of assessments in the workplace. These assessments brings us back to the acronyms, and I'm just going to go through each one in turn. Um, some of them you'll be familiar with, many of them you'll be familiar with from foundation training or from medical school, but the terminology, the acronyms are often different from one field to another, and these are the acronyms used for general practice. Mini KEX, history of examination, but a history of examination in the workplace, not on a random person brought in into a seminar room. History of examination on a real person. CBD, case-based discussion, not near the patient. An assessment in a seminar room or a tutorial room uh, or in an office where you present a case to, um, to your supervisor. Um, history examination, working diagnosis, investigations, management plan, therapy interventions. DOPS, directly observed procedures. There's talk about changing the DOPS and moving on to something else, but at the moment, as far as I'm aware, they stand. Um, there are eight procedures that have got to be done. They're not very challenging procedures. They must be procedures carried out in the workplace and assessed by assessors. COTS, consultation observation tool, which is really a mini KEX, but a mini KEX in general practice, because there's nuances in general practice which are very different to secondary care, which mean that the tool we use for assessment of uh, clinical examination in um, general practice is the COT. MSF, what your colleagues think of you, multi-source feedback, PSQ, patient satisfaction questionnaire, what your patients think of you. CSR, during each placement you'll have a clinical supervisor who's usually one of the consultants in your department, a named person who at the end of the six months will write a report on how you progressed in that department, with the skills, the knowledge, the awareness, the ability to apply your skills to your patients and the expectations of your career grade. ESR, Educated Supervisor Report over the programme. Um, there's variation between schemes, but often it's the person who will be your trainer in your final year, your educational supervisor, a GP trainer, watching, monitoring, seeing how you develop into a general practitioner, applying the skills you pick up in any one placement to the holistic skills, the um, expectations of being um, a GP. There's variations on the number of assessments that need to be done. Um, in ST1 and ST2 it's fairly similar and these two slides show uh, the numbers of assessments but you don't have to do an MSF in ST2. In ST3 it all doubles up, there's a lot more assessments to be done and um, a lot more effort needs to be put into making sure the assessments are completed. But make sure your assessments are completed by people in your clinical department. Not friends, not colleagues, not peers, not um, people on training schemes, not people with random um, email addresses which happen to contain something uh, akin to a hospital trust or a general practice or an academic body. Every year we find people who unfortunately choose to use um, inappropriate people to have the assessments done and it is very serious. It is very serious, I can't stress enough. There's no hesitation, the deanery is obliged under um, UK rules and regulations to um, refer cases to the GMC. You, you, you don't need to do that. As established at the beginning of this talk, you are extremely bright, intelligent people. You don't need to play games with the system. Take, take, take the role, take your work seriously and with integrity. What do you need to do now? You need to register with the Royal College as an AIT and associate in training. Um, this is the web link, but if you go to the Royal College homepage or follow the icons for membership, you'll find um, the, the, the registration schemes easily enough. Um, there's a cost to all of this. There's, an, there's a joining fee, there's an annual subscription fee. There's more fees to pay um, when you complete your training to get your CCT certificate registered by the GMC. There's your first year GMC fees. In order to use the letters MRCGP in three years' time after your name, you need to pay for that as well, an annual membership. And it gets worse. Uh, I mentioned the two exams earlier. In the first year, the AKT um, costs money to enter, and this is the payment. And the CSA is even worse still. CSA is this payment. It's a lot of money, a lot of cash, a lot of incentive to pass first time. What do you need to do now? You need to meet your educational supervisor and start planning your training and arrange further meetings during the course of the six-month placement, often in the middle and at the end to see how things are going through. 
you need to look at um, not only completing assessments but also displaying evidence of your learning and evidence of your learning is displayed on something called learning logs. So we expect learning logs to be completed regularly. The slide says one a week, but we expect um, probably something a bit more than that to be completed. And it's the evidence that you've learned, that you've developed your learning. We're looking for something sophisticated, your GP specialty trainees. Um, some people would enter a learning log. I saw a patient who was breathless. Um, I put my stethoscope on his chest and I heard some crackle. I gave him some fruits and and he got better the next day. That is totally inappropriate. We expect something about the application of your knowledge, the application of your learning to the patient as a person. I diagnosed heart failure and I was a little bit nervous about um, giving any medication because of comorbidities, um, including um, uh, several disabilities that this patient had. I had to discuss um, the options for the patient with himself, with his family, with my colleagues before giving what would otherwise be a fairly simple treatment, the evidence of your learning. We expect an audit during the programme, an audit to show that not only can you develop, but you can apply your knowledge to improve systems, to build up systems, to make sure that systems are better and improving all the time. Um, evidence of tutorial learning and e-learning, evidence of out-of-hours programmes that you have to attend, you're obliged to attend, and also this other one, significant event analysis. Significant event is not, I saw a patient, thought he had heart failure, gave him fruits of mind, he didn't get better, and he turned out to have a heart attack and I missed it, and oh dear, that happens. Significant event is, I made the wrong diagnosis, or I understood from my colleagues that they often make the wrong diagnosis in this sort of set of um, clinical symptoms and scenarios. And I brought this to my clinical supervisor and we undertook learning session to improve the whole knowledge of the team to make sure that the wrong diagnosis was, was, was not made again or minimised, the risk was minimised. So we're looking for significant events of team systems, improvement, building, um, bringing the team forward, not the event that happened, but how you make sure on a team scale that things don't go wrong again. You have to show that it's curriculum coverage, the curriculum headings are short to change, this is the current 2011-12 um, curriculum headings that will be altered slightly, but it's more the headings rather than the detail that will be altered. There's about 35 chapter headings on the curriculum, and you've got to show development in each of those curriculum headings through the three-year programme. Competence. The GMC has um, agreed with the Royal College definition of 12 competences, which during the programme you expect to show development in and attainment in at the end of the programme. And during the course of your programme, you'll be assessed on a regular basis to make sure that you're developing in each of those competences and developing at an expected rate. For all these assessments, you're going to need to involve other people. And we're all busy. We've all got our clinical work, our domestic life, our home life. We've got patients um, gate crashing our day with emergencies. Um, we, we've got meetings to go to, learning to do, we need some rest and um, refreshment as well. Make sure you don't leave your assessments, your reports to the last minute. Uh, make sure everything is booked in. There's no sympathy in anyone in the London Deanery to hear that an assessment wasn't completed because uh, the person undertaking that responsibility was away as the deadline approached for, for, for the sign-off. Um, just moving on through these slides here, we've got the building site. Those of you who ever may have worked in construction have seen this sign, no hat, no boots, no jobs. If it isn't there, if the evidence is not there, if the complete evidence is not there, you cannot work, you cannot perform your role as a GP and continue in the training programme in the way that you can't go on a construction site unless you've got the necessary required um, pieces of equipment. This is your piece of equipment to make sure that you have things done. The, Royal, the Deanery is obliged to follow rules and regulations on quality management and quality assurance from the GMC. This is the document, the Gold Guide, which is uh, published by the GMC. This is the 2010 version. There was no version in 2011. There may be a 2012 version coming out this autumn. Uh, we'll wait to see, but the, the, the versions will only have um, minor changes and not um, anything fundamental. On an annual basis, every training in London is reviewed by a panel called the ARCP panel, Annual Review of Competency Progression, which comes back to the slide we looked at earlier with competences and how people progress through those competences. The RPC can give one of six outcomes, and most of you will get one or six, which is satisfactory progress, or six is completion of the programme. There are other options here as well, which fortunately are used very rarely, but sometimes they have to be used when things don't work out right. I'm going to flag up public health, because public health placements are very difficult to get some of the workplace assessments carried out in. Public health looks at populations where um, most clinical systems, primary and secondary care, look at patients, and assessments are given for patients and not populations. So for public health posts, 
If you're completing a public health post now, you'll mean you've got to do double the number of assessments in your last six months. However, and, that, and that's all right because you can rack, however, you've got your public health post in the second six months of this attachment, you've got to look at doing the assessments um, now and double the numbers that your colleagues have to do. AKT is an exit exam, it's taken in the driving test centre, Pearson View, um, and um, it tries to look at the application of knowledge. So here we have a fairly um, simple question, what is this? And then you look at it first of all and you think, um, well it's a primate, so it must be grill, and you realise grillers don't have red faces, so it's obviously not an elephant, so it must be number three. Well that's knowledge, but the AKT tries to be applied knowledge, and the AKT will give you this sort of question, which not only requires you to know that this is the Secretary of State for Health, but requires you to know the um, dietary guidance, and the nice dietary guidance of the Secretary of State for Health, the application of knowledge rather than knowledge itself. CSA, um, I think I want to change the slide here because the CSA is now going to be taken in Houston in the new RCGP headquarters from the beginning of um, August, September, which is just over the road. Um, and that's a mock surgery going on for um, about two and a half, three hours. And you have 13 stations and 13 patients. At the end, everything passed, everything satisfactory. The final ARCP gives you the sign off. Certificate of Completion of Training. It's great, it's fantastic, it's wonderful, but just be aware of this word change. Medicine changes, medical practice changes, the system to support medicine changes, and also assessments change. Make sure you keep abreast of everything that's happening and everything that's going on. We're here to help you and support you. There's personnel changes and reorganisation in the dean at the moment, so I can't give you names. But this email address should be used for any query you have regarding the ePortfolio as the first portal call, and we will do everything we can to help you and support you. In summary, what you need to do, you need to register the Royal College as an associate in training, you need to meet your educational supervisor, you need to start the ball rolling with your assessments, you need to start saving money because it's going to cost you an absolute fortune, but you need to enjoy it. Congratulations. Have an absolutely fantastic and wonderful three-year programme and every success. Thank you.